That's Coach Michael Burt. Welcome to Super Coach. How do you not serve leftovers to the people you love the most? How do you can serve some energy so that you got some leftover when you get home with your family or outside passions and not pour everything you got into your work? This is going to be hard, but I believe this is a vital part to leaving a, a well balanced, healthy lifestyle to have some goods left over when you get home. That is what we're tackling today on a Super Coach. Hey guys, Coach Michael Burt, welcome, welcome, welcome. Man, we have had a hectic day today, Brandon. We have been, uh, I have spoken four, five, six times today. I'm Coach Michael Burt. I'm coming to you live from the Greatness Factory, and uh, I am trying to practice what I'm actually preaching today, which is how do you not serve leftovers to the people you love the most? I talk a little bit about this in an old show I did called Crumbs, but 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 this is a growing problem for, for hustlers, for movers and shakers out there in the world that go out there every single day and put their heart and soul into their business and into their life, is how do I preserve some energy, some mojo, some confidence from, from swag for my family when I get home? If I don't have a family, what about my outside passions? What about just wanting to go home and enjoy life and not be tired and exhausted and want to sit on the couch and do absolutely nothing. So today's show is about how you not serve leftovers to the people you love the most. I think about now that I'm married and have a three-year-old daughter, um, I think about how it's so easy to get up and go to work every single day and just absolutely pour everything I've got into my work and then get home and my daughter wants to play catch, she wants to play soccer, she wants to play basketball, she wants to go up to the play park and I'm just tired or I'm just exhausted or I'm just having no energy. And and not long ago, I said, this is not acceptable. This is just not acceptable. I have got to rewire and rethink how I structure my days so that I do not burn all of my good fuel during the day and end up exhausted at night. So I've been sharing this concept with people all over the country. I'll eventually probably write a book about it called Crumbs, How Not to Serve Leftovers to the People You Love the Most. But this has to do with energy uh, management. It has to do with how you attack a day. It has to do with what you feed into the day. It has to do with the drama you participate in. And so we're going to cover all that today on this concept. Now, where did this concept come from? Where did this concept come from? Here's the genesis of this. I'm sitting at Bonefish Grill one Saturday night with uh, uh, some good friends, husband and wife, and we're having some dialogue about work and play and family and friends, and uh, we start talking about kind of buffer time between work and getting home. And the wife simply said, the the wife simply said, let's be honest, what you really give me and what you really give our kids are crumbs. It's just leftovers. And and I started thinking, my gosh, man, that's she's talking to me. Because for years I gave leftover to my family, I gave leftover to my friends, I gave leftover to my own personal passions at the expense of my work, at the expense of pursuing 80-hour work weeks. And so this is the rub. I want to take it all the way in my business. I want to deeply impact the world. I want to I want to constantly move the ball down the field. I want to go out there and build a business that is so impactful. So how do I do that in a day and then go home at night and have just as much leftover energy for them? And that's really where the concept of crumbs came from. So when you're thinking about this concept, I'm sure there's some people out there who are really – that, that, that fall guilty into this. But, but here's the deal. We live in a complex, emotionally overtaxed and overstressed world that really leads to one thing, depletion of energy. From the moment I got up this morning and from the moment that I got started, the moment that I got started, my energy was becoming depleted. If I involve myself in any type of negative activity during the day, it, it eats away at my energy at two times the rate. 
So how do I build a day and get in a flow and get in an energy so that when I get home at night, I got more energy versus less energy, okay? I can give more versus less. So so uh, I want you to think of your energy like a cell phone battery. I got this Mophie now, man. So one of the greatest inventions in the world, 45 bucks. Your phone virtually never goes dead. And when it starts to go dead, you click that puppy on. As long as it's charged up, your phone goes back to 100%. It is unbelievable. That is a solution to a real problem. But guess what? We don't have a Mophie in our lives. Our battery starts going down. It just goes down and down and down until it just basically shuts down. So I want you to start thinking about your energy like a cell phone battery. Every morning it starts on high. Only if you went to sleep, got a good night's rest, got up and ate breakfast, probably got some workout or exercise in, is your battery on 100%. If not, it may be on 40% when you wake up. What if your daughter wakes up in the middle of the night and stays up for two hours like our daughter did last night? My wife had to stay up and, and take care of her. She didn't start the day with 100%. She started the day with 70% battery. And so for you, you got to understand first that we live in a complex, emotionally overtaxed, overstressed world that leads to a depletion of energy. And here's what happens. We feel guilty about it. We feel guilty when we don't give our loved ones the most. We feel guilty when we've got leftover energy. We feel guilty when we serve crumbs to God or to our family or to our friends. So what we got to do is we got to get in a habit because that's really what it becomes. And I almost think it comes down to personalities. I think high day, high D, type A, firstborn, Leos, they're, they're hardwired to attack like cheetahs. And when they go into a day, they just go as hard as they can and they deplete that energy. And that's what we're talking about today. So when we come back in segment number two, I'm going to talk about help. I've got a poor energy management system. Then we're going to get into how Phil Jackson actually taught his players to, to conserve energy. And before every break, i got to give you some kryptonite because that's what a good coach does. I believe a good coach will always find a kryptonite in your life. You start off bad. So you start bad and you burn all your good energy, usually leaving none for later when you get home. And what I mean by that, you roll out of bed late, you don't exercise, you don't eat breakfast, you fight in traffic. Look at how much energy you've already burned before you even get to work. You're watching Super Coach. I'm Coach Michael Burt. When we come back in segment two, we're tackling help. I need a I need a new energy management system. Hey guys, I'm Coach Michael Burt. Imagine starting your day off with a super coach. Imagine going to work and logging in for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or even 15 minutes on your lunch break and getting some coaching on leadership, sales, personal growth, how to advance, how to be a monster producer. Well, we partner with Lightspeed Virtual Training to create the most comprehensive virtual training in the world so you can get the super coach every single day. We've got an expansive concept where we tackle operations, sales, leadership, management, personal growth, even a Christian series. And we can come in every single day and become a coach to you. I believe everybody needs a coach in life. We are now offering the Michael Burt Total Growth Academy, and it has something for everybody. Hey guys, I'm Coach Michael Burt, the Super Coach. I believe everybody needs a good coach in life. And one of the hottest programs we have out in 2016 is Turn Your Managers into coaches. We want to take your current managers and teach them how to recruit and attract better talent, how to coach and develop that talent, and how to retain that talent. Most managers do not know how to coach and develop talent. That's why we developed this very extensive program, 12 modules. We can deliver it in one day. We can deliver it in four sessions, six sessions, or 12 sessions. All you got to go is to managers2coaches.com and sign your team up so we can coach them up. And here's what's going to happen. More engagement, better cultures, better work environments, and you're going to get much more production. Turn your managers into coaches with Coach Michael Burke. Hey guys, welcome back. Coach Michael Burt, Super Coach. Every week I come into your life to really do three things, multiply your life and your money and your business. 
I believe a good coach can change your life. I believe a good coach will have conversations with you that you don't want to have, make you do some things you don't want to do. Follow me at Michael Bird on the Twitter. You can also download my podcast, Super Coach. And please do this. iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Podcast Republic. Download and share with other people Super Coach because I believe every week I'm going to give you some energy. We typically come to you on Tuesday, but I was out of town speaking in Knoxville, Tennessee yesterday to mortgage bankers. Today I've had uh, several groups at the Greatness Factory. That's my unique training def, uh, destination. I've had monster teams in here uh, this morning and afternoon. I spoke at a luncheon, insurance luncheon, and uh, tomorrow I'm headed back to Knoxville to take some meetings with some friends in East Tennessee. Today we're talking no leftovers. There's a topic. There you can see it. We're all probably guilty of serving leftovers uh, to our to our husbands, to our wives, to our kids. Now, let me be very clear about this. My wife can serve me leftovers as well because she spends all of her time taking care of the family, running the household. She handles all of our real estate and rental properties that are short-term rentals. She can actually give me leftovers too. So don't think for a second that this is because a male or female goes to work and pours all of their heart and soul into their work that they serve leftovers. A stay-at-home mom can serve leftovers. Okay, we can, we, can, we can all serve leftovers because of our energy management system. So what I'm really saying to my family and my daughter and my wife and my family is this. I honor you. I love you. I want to fulfill you. I, I want to be your partner. I want to bring my best self home to you. Okay? I don't want to just give you the second version or the second best version of me. I actually want to give you some of my best. I'm going to save the best for last. So the problem becomes, how do I go to work and pour all of my heart and soul into my clients and still do that? So, so I want to talk to you about having a poor energy management system. An energy management system is this. Energy cannot be created. It can only be transferred. Energy cannot be created. It can only be transferred. That energy is created, okay, and transferred within your own body by the sleep, by the, by the exercise, by, the, by the, what you read, by what you eat. That creates energy. That energy is then transferred to other people. When we pour lots of energy into things, it basically subtracts that energy or it compounds that energy, okay? And so, so the old way of me is I'm going to get up early. I'm going to get a workout in. I'm going to go as hard as I can. I'm going to get home at 5, 30, 6 o'clock. I'm going to be completely exhausted, and I got nothing. I got nothing. The new me is this. I value you. I honor you. I want to fulfill you. I want to be there for you, so I can't go pour everything into this and not have anything for you. So so here's a, here would be a negative. A negative would be you slam into your day, you're tired, you're exhausted, you're in mechanical mode, you're burned out, you didn't get enough rest, you didn't eat breakfast, you're running late in the morning, slam into the day. Then you go till 5 o'clock, 5.15, you're supposed to be home at 5.30, you push it right to the edge, you fight traffic on the way home, you slam into home, you got a bad attitude, there's no buffer time, there's no energy, and guess what? All your energy is depleted. Why? Why? Because you slammed into the day and you slammed into the night. There was no proper preparation. And so, you know, I can't remember how Elrout came out with the book, The Miracle Morning. How, you know, how do you start the day, I really think matters. So I think some of my strategies is this. Number one, I want to get up earlier than everybody in the house. I want to get some quiet time just to me. I'm going to get some exercise in. I'm going to listen to something that gets my mind right for me. That's a sermon every morning. Then I'm going to be ready when my family wakes up. I'm not going to rush to the office. I'm going to go into the office in a nice, relaxed, casual way. I'm going to get to the office early enough to prepare and be ready. I've already planned out my day the night before, so I've got my target set, and I'm ready to go. During the day, I'm going to peak up, and I'm going to pulse down. I'm actually going to pulse. And what I mean by that is I may go really hard, then I may take a break. I may go really hard, then I may take a break. I may step outside and get some fresh air. I may go for a walk. Uh, I may get out of the office and go for lunch. I'm going to do something to conserve some energy here so that it's not just completely killing me. And Phil Jackson used to actually teach his players this, at the Bulls and the Lakers, how to conserve 
good energy so that they could throw the energy in at the end and win the game. So if you watch the Bulls play the Lakers, they would actually play with the other team for a period of time. They would conserve energy, and when they needed to peak up, they would peak up. So, so I want you to think of it like an entertainer. An entertainer plays at a very high level. They peak up, but they also take time off to rest, and they take time to practice, and they take time to play. They rest, they practice, they perform. What if an entertainer performed 365 days a year? They would be tired, mechanical, frustrated, irritated, agitated. They can't go at that pace for that long. So what, th- what about athletes? Athletes rest, athletes practice, and athletes play. They rest, they practice, and they perform. So what I'm telling you is this. If you perform 365 days a year, you're going to run out of good mojo. You're going to run out of juice. And so when we come back in segment three, I'm going to show you how to use a new time system. I'm going to show you uh, a simple plan to get your good mojo, okay? And then I'm going to talk about some strategies that you can do to buffer down before you get home at night for your leftovers. So let me give you some kryptonite here in segment number two. You spend lots of your time in very low value activity. This is kryptonite for you. Low values activity, complaining, comparing, contending, criticizing, complacency, cynicism. You spend your time in low value drama activity, majoring in the minors, and here's what this does. This actually sucks all of your good energy. Like that cell phone battery that's going dead, it actually sucks your energy at two times the rate. I'm Coach Michael Burch. You're watching Super Coach. I got one more good segment on how not to serve leftovers to the people you love the most. Hey guys, I'm Coach Michael Burt. Imagine starting your day off with a super coach. Imagine going to work and logging in for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or even 15 minutes on your lunch break and getting some coaching on leadership, sales, personal growth, how to advance, how to be a monster producer. Well, we partner with Lightspeed Virtual Training to create the most comprehensive virtual training in the world so you can get the Super Coach every single day. We've got an expansive concept where we tackle operations, sales, leadership, management, personal growth, even a Christian series. And we can come in every single day and become a coach to you. I believe everybody needs a coach in life. We are now offering the Michael Burke Total Growth Academy, and it has something for everybody. Hey guys, I'm Coach Michael Burt, and let me tell you, I'm an outsider. Why do you need an outsider at your conference? Well, I don't sell real estate, but I coach some of the biggest real estate agents in the country. I don't sell mortgages, but I coach $100 million producers. I don't sell investments, but some of the biggest banks and investment firms have brought me in to coach their people. And you know why? I bring a fresh perspective. That's called Vuja Day, not Deja Vu. I bring a new mindset, a new outlook, a new perspective. I think you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. You can't stir the pot when you're inside the bowl. I look at everything as a seasoned consumer that asks this question, what are you missing in your business? People value my opinion just like they valued Michael Burry, who was the first person to know that there was going to be a housing bubble. What was his background? Oh yeah, he was an MD that had a unique perspective. So I'm telling you, you need an outsider on every speaking docket. You don't need people in the industry that just copy and paste from each other and just replicate the same old tired ideas. I see these people as producers and I see that they need a super coach in their life that can break down their business in a new and fresh way. I'm Coach Michael Burke and I need to be on your next speaking docket as the one outsider that can bring a new perspective to an old tired way of doing business. Hey guys, welcome back. Episode number three, Coach Michael Bird, the Super Coach. I come into your life every week multiplying life and money and business like a good coach does. I'm trying to find the kryptonite. And kryptonite for me, I want to be completely transparent, is for me, much of my life I've been a workaholic. I I have worked, I have gotten a lot of my value 
by working the success I've had, the worldly success, whether it be with championships and coaching or writing books or speaking all over the country. And uh, it never really occurred to me until I had my own family about what a disservice I was doing to them to just pour everything I've got into my work and, and completely ignore them. And I started saying, man, it just, it ain't right. It's not fair for me to give you crumbs. I've really got to do a better job of energy management. And I've got to build these structures and systems into my workday that I can give my clients everything they need and more. I can completely pursue my dreams and passions with my business. And then I can go home at the end of the day and have some good mojo left for whatever the case may be. And so the topic of today's show has been how do I not serve leftovers to the people I love the most? Now, if you're a, a religious and faith-based person like I am, one, one person that gets some of the biggest leftovers in the world is God. We got a few minutes in the morning to pray. We got a few minutes for quiet time. We really we got we got an hour for church on Sunday, and all this other stuff is just consuming our time and energy. And I get it. I get you're in a hustle, but those are things of the world. And so, who do we serve leftovers to? We serve leftovers to God. We serve leftovers to our family. We serve leftovers to our friends. We serve leftovers to our passions outside of work. We serve leftovers to our community. I mean, there's all kinds of people we serve leftovers to because we're just too busy being fabulous. Go back and listen to my show on that. We're just too busy being fabulous. We're too busy being our own little machine that we don't have any good energy left over. So let's look at what a new energy would be. We've already said, look, when you get home, I'll, I honor you. I love you. I believe in you. I want to I want to fulfill my part of this, of this role, okay? I want to conserve some energy during the day. So how do we do that? What would be a simple plan for high-impact energy, okay? A new plan for the day actually starts with the night before. Your new plan for the day actually starts with tonight. So if you want to have good energy tomorrow, here's here's what you got to do. You got to get in a rhythm. We, 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 in my household, our daughter takes a bath at 7. She can watch TV from 8 to 9, and she's in the bed. And we're in the bed by 9, 9.30. We're going to get good 7, 8 hours of sleep. We're going to be, I'm going to get up early. I'm going to be ready to go. I'm going to make sure I fill out my monster producer planner every night so that I'm ready to go tomorrow. I don't slam into the day. I don't want to be rushed in the morning. I don't want to burn a bunch of energy. I don't want to have a bunch of wasted conversation. These are all things that I don't want to burn all of my good energy during the day. You know, as an old coach, I used to get very emotional. And I would get emotional toward the officials, and I'd get mad about something, and it would just burn up so much energy. And I'd get home at the end of a Friday night, man, and I was just useless. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to see anybody. I, I, no wonder I didn't have any healthy relationships during that period in my life because I was no good to anybody. I would pour everything into what I got and be useless to people. And so to me, I got to make up some decisions. I'm not going to participate in low-energy behavior during the day. That means I'm not going to compare, complain, contend, criticize, be complacent, be cynical. I'm not going to have low-wasted negative energy. I'm not going to major in the minors. I'm not going to play small ball. I'm not going to get caught up in everything else that everybody's doing. I ain't got time. I, I ain't got time. I got to learn to say no because I got a deeper burning yes waiting on me at home. Okay? I'm going to basically start every day off. I'm going to pulse during the day. And what I mean by pulse during the day is I'm going to peak up and peak down. I'm going to go hard and then I'm going to recalibrate. I'm going to go hard and then I'm going to recalibrate. Now let's talk about that at the end of the day. I used to work 5, 5, 15 drive as fast as I could get home, roll into home and slam into the day. Now I want to take a break. I get done at 4.50 today. I want to stop. I want to decompress. Sometimes I'll, I'll go exercise before I get home. Sometimes I'll take a shower as soon as I get home to just give me some buffer to basically power down, stop one roll, and start my new roll. Now, there is an entrepreneurial time system that I use that I adopted from Dan Sullivan, a strategic coach. It says that there are three types of days. I have focus days or focus time where 80% of my time is money generating activity. I have buffer time, which is time that I'm backstage, catch up, preparation, planning, and then I have off days for rejuvenation. So if you look at my schedule, it is geared around those three days. Mondays are typically buffer. 
in the office but not client interfacing, strategy, planning, meeting with my team, getting ready. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are focus days, money generating, client interfacing, in front of clients. Friday is typically a mix between focus and buffer, money generating, powering down. Saturday I take off. I take one day off a week and that's Saturday for me. Okay, and by that time, my mind is fried. I'm completely ready for a break from the business, and I need to rejuvenate. I need to replenish. The word rejuvenate needs to, means to make young again. So remember these three modes of operation. I'm rejuvenated, which means I'm fresh, I'm on fire, and I've got a ton of energy. I'm ready to go. Why? Because I've conserved energy. Number two, I'm mechanical. Burn the engine as hard as I can. Don't get the oil checked. Burnout is next. So I got rejuvenated, I got mechanical, and I got burnout. Guess where, guess where you serve the leftovers? You serve the leftovers from running the engine in the mechanical mode for far too long. So let's recap this show, then I'm going to give you some kryptonite and get you out of here. Number one, you got to know it's a trap. It's one of the biggest traps in the world to pour all your energy into one thing and not have any left over for everybody else. Now, you're going to hear people say, uh, I want balance in every area of my life. I want a healthy balance between work and home. It's, it's very hard to get when you're as passionate about something as some people are. Your work is your distribution channel for your talents. You believe God has given you certain talents and you are distributing those talents to the world. So tell a person to calm down that, that is on fire for what they do. Hey, it ain't going to work. They're going to pour everything they got into it. And all I'm saying is this. Still pour everything you got into your work. Still pour everything you, into your passion. But just learn, based on a few minor adjustments and a higher awareness, that you no longer want to serve leftovers to people you love the most. So how you end a day, how you start a day, what you do and participate during the day, are all critical to you having enough energy left over for family, friends, passions, pets, whatever it is you want to do, hobbies, when you get home. Now let me serve you up some kryptonite here, the third segment. Good Coach is always going to give you some kryptonite, guys. What is it here? You value your work over your family. It's just that simple. You value your work over your family or your personal passions and can't save some energy for later, creating tremendous strain on your relationship. One of the worst things your wife can tell you is you love your work more than you love me. You love your work more than you love our family. You love your work more than you love this. Here's the deal. The word intentional congruence is how can I love it all? And how can I give my best and absolute uh, concentrated effort? To my work, my play, my passions, my family, my faith. How do I not serve leftovers to anybody? Every week I come into your life to multiply your life and multiply your money and multiply your business. That's what a good coach does. My name is Coach Michael Burt. You can go to CoachBurt.com. Click on anything you want. Program speaking. We really got six distinct coaching brands you can click on. We've got something literally for everybody who's out there looking for a good coach and be on the lookout in just a few weeks for my total growth academy that's going to be the most comprehensive online virtual training program i think in the market we're going to make a strong argument that we've got something for every person in a company to log in and watch every single week to keep your mojo high and protect your confidence i'm coach michael burke go to super coach and download this everybody needs a good coach in life thank you for letting me be yours Hey guys, I'm Coach Michael Burt. Imagine starting your day off with a super coach. Imagine going to work and logging in for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or even 15 minutes on your lunch break and getting some coaching on leadership, sales, personal growth, how to advance, how to be a monster producer. Well, we partner with Lightspeed Virtual Training to create the most comprehensive virtual training in the world so you can get the super coach every single day. We've got an expansive 
concept where we tackle operations, sales, leadership, management, personal growth, even a Christian series. And we can come in every single day and become a coach to you. I believe everybody needs a coach in life. We are now offering the Michael Burke Total Growth Academy, and it has something for everybody.